Well, hello, welcome to my channel if you're new and welcome back if you are one of my friends. So today we're actually gonna be going on a little bit of an adventure. And when I say adventure, I really mean it because nothing went according to plan. So in a previous video, I alluded to the fact that I had a trip planned. I was going to be going to collaborate with some other creative photographers that do like fantasy cottage core style photography and who also like to model and dress up Unfortunately, the trip ended up being a completely different trip than that. To give a little bit of background, a week before I was supposed to leave and I already had everything set in stone as far as my plans, the trip organizer ended up having to back out due to a family emergency, which is unfortunate, but it was kind of unavoidable. We did have the option to keep the trip going and just have someone else be in charge and possibly find a replacement or just go anyways because we were going to be renting an Airbnb. We all ended up compromising and deciding that it would be better for the group as a whole to just reschedule the trip. Unfortunately, I won't be able to go to the rescheduled portion of the trip because I had purchased a non-refundable plane ticket and that's what was best for me financially what I could afford and I had booked it through a third party booking service, which Expedia, which a lot of us use because it's cheaper. So I didn't want to waste the ticket. So I decided to just go to the East Coast anyways. I do have family in Brooklyn. So the original plan was I was gonna be landing in the Philadelphia airport, being picked up by one of the photographers, going to the Airbnb in Jersey. And then after the trip or after the photo shoots, I was going to ride with someone that lived upstate back up to Brooklyn and then meet up with my family. Before that, I was just gonna fly home from Philly right after the trip, but um, when I talked to my family, they are like, you should come visit. So I was like, okay, I'll come visit. And I managed to get a new ticket to go home from JFK because I have, I, I fly a lot, so I had a lot of points. So, so now I was like, okay, so I'll fly into Philly. My family will meet me there and then we'll drive back up to Brooklyn. It was gonna be like a two and a half hour drive each way, but they were willing to do it. As things went on, more things started to go wrong. And so firstly, I, you know, like I, I was really disappointed. Like part of me almost felt cheated. Like, you know, I'd spent all this money to go meet these people, people that I've always wanted to work with and it just wasn't working out. And now it was just like a family trip. I I felt that way in the beginning, but then as the trip started to get closer and as I started to leave, more things started to go wrong and it became evident that no matter which way you looked at it, no matter what angle you looked at it, it wouldn't have worked out. Another person that was supposed to go got COVID. Um, I think someone else had just come back from another shoot and was not feeling well. I don't remember if they tested for COVID or not. Um, another person got really swamped at work and couldn't, wouldn't have been able to make it anyway. And there was like a whole bunch of things and the weather was terrible while I would have been there. I don't know if South Jersey would have been affected by it, but New York was scorching hot, abnormally scorching hot for May when we were there. And I'm used to heat because I live in Sacramento and it gets super duper hot here, but it was also extremely humid which we don't get. It felt like Florida. It was 80 or 90 degrees, but then like, I think at one point it got up to 70% humidity. The air was thick and sticky and disgusting. So if we had been experiencing that in like our stays and our costumes, it would have been all bad. So that was another angle. Um, and then I wouldn't even have made it to Philly. I'll explain. My very first flight from Sacramento, which I was supposed to leave at 6 a.m., didn't leave on time because Delta, 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 Delta. <laughs> They've been having issues lately. And the plane we were supposed to leave on, I was supposed to fly from Sacramento to Salt Lake City, to Denver, to Philly. The Sacramento plane had electrical issues and we were grounded for an hour. We had to like deboard and then get back on. So I would have missed my connector to Denver. Actually, everyone missed their connecting flights. And since I was just gonna be going to New York anyways, I ended up um, rebooking a flight from Salt Lake City to JFK. So I was like, okay, this works out better. I leave at 11, I'm gonna get there at five. I'm actually gonna get there a lot sooner than I would have gotten there if I had landed in Philly and had to drive all the way up to Brooklyn. And then that, that flight got delayed for three hours. So long story short, I ended up not getting to Brooklyn until like 9 p.m. And then we ended up having to stay on the tarmac 
tarmac for like an hour and wait for a gate because so many other flights had been delayed like three hours. I think it's because there was a storm, but also because Delta sucks. I don't know if you guys have been keeping up with the news with regard to Delta. They've, they've been canceling and delaying flights left and right and it's been horrible. Fortunately, they did give me a, a meal voucher so I was able to get some food, but I have horrible travel anxiety. So I barely ate when I was in Salt, Salt Lake. Um, I think I ate, mostly ate gummy worms that I had packed because like sugar I could eat, substantial food. No, my belly was like, mm, nope. Anyway, so the first day I ended up not vlogging because I was mostly in airports and on planes and waiting around to get there. So it was horrible. Second day, I did start vlogging. So we pretty much just had a chill day. Um, I had like a little bit of breakfast. I still wasn't really feeling up to eating that much, but we made iced coffee. Mona, hi baby. She's staring at me. <laughs> hi. She knows the camera. I can pose. You like the camera? <laughs> and then since my sister-in-law knew that I wanted to take pictures, we made arrangements to go to the Brooklyn Botanical Garden, which was not too far from where they lived. And that was another thing was um, we had access to a car, which if you are a New Yorker or you know people who live in New York, having a car is like, it's like having a golden ticket. But yeah, so we, I ended up meeting a couple new friends. We took one of them along with us to the Brooklyn Botanical Garden and she was, she's such a sweetheart. Her name is Sarah also. I have another friend now that's named Sarah. <laughs> Hi. She vlogged for me while we were there, like took video of us taking pictures. We just had a great time. And while I was there, I actually got to rent a Canon R6. So we were able to take some really amazing photos because the Canon R6 paired with my Sigma, um, I think it's the Sigma 1.4 30 millimeter lens. I, I can't remember specs, but it's my Sigma and I love them. I love her, she's my baby, but right now she's in the shop because she broke right when I got home. It was like, oh, nope, I'm broken. So right now I'm using my 50 mil. I'm just gonna do a cartwheel for the video. Yeah. There I can see you, okay. Is it recording? Yeah, I okay. Think. Don't okay. break anything. Woo! Did I do it? Yeah. <laughs> I think so. Wait, I don't think I do <laughs> There you go. <laughs> Those bees are acting crazy. Objection relevance. Is this recording? It is. Girl. Was it? Right, it says recording. <laughs> oh, it's been like a minute. <laughs> Hello, welcome to my channel. But yeah, so we took pictures and then the second day um, I got to meet another friend named Taylor and we went to the Fit Museum of Fashion, I believe is what it's called. But unfortunately the fashion portion was closed other than what was in the lobby. All right, there's Taylor and there's Sonny. We are in the art section. Museum well, of Fit. Fashion. Visa, yeah. Well, it was supposed to be fashion, but it was just it was art. Fashion. There, the fashion was closed. <laughs> There's no fashion. <laughs> Wait, hold on. Let me zoom in on the coat. It's just like a slow zoom because the zoom isn't very fast. <laughs> This is like goth like chic. Park. I like this. Would you have have rocked this in high school? I feel like I would have unsuccessfully. Yeah. <laughs> I would have been like, this is so, cause I was really into like really cool black structured, um, like almost apocalyptic chic stuff. I never wore it. Cause I was like, there's no way. I love that apocalyptic chic. I told you I used to just wear like a biker jacket. Yeah. <laughs> call it cool, call it cool, call it cool. Call it Whatever is like, I feel like we all had our easy to throw on uniform, especially back, like school time or like. Skinny jeans, combat boots, biker jacket, and a flannel. There you go. That was it. Yeah, black skinny <laughs> jeans. I wore. I owned so many because well, I worked at Starbucks too, and that's all I wore were black skinny jeans and combat boots. And then I, after work, I would just change from the polo to a t-shirt. Done. No, it's perfect. Yeah. Look, it's me! Space buns, fairy wings. Very cute. 
Um, yeah, I didn't really vlog that much to be honest because I was I was struggling with my feelings of feeling disappointment because I also tried to meet up with certain creators while I was out there but it just ended up not working out because none of them were really having a good weekend either. It was hot and humid and people were busy with work or just weren't feeling well. So I tried to make the most of it and I, I'm really thankful for my sister-in-law and my brother-in-law for taking me around and making sure I had a good time and also my sister-in-law took some bomb photos. Honestly, um, you can really tell that she comes from a family of photographers. If you if you guys don't know, I my father-in-law, her father and my husband's father, um, he used to be a professional photographer. Now he's more of a hobby photographer. He doesn't do weddings anymore, but he takes pictures of wildlife. I actually sold him a couple of lenses that used to belong to my dad because my dad got into photography for a hot minute, but his ADHD or whatever he has going on, he's not into it anymore. So I sold him some really cool lenses. So he's like my photography buddy too. It's, it's, it's really awesome. Like we, we all have like these shared interests and we're able to collaborate. Like my husband claims to not be a photographer, but you guys have seen his photos that he's taken. I also took lots of pictures of her cat. Her cat is freaking cute. The last day, however, was probably, not the last day, but one of the last days that I vlogged was probably the best day. We got to go to L Train Vintage, which I, I didn't really plan on thrifting while I was there because even though you would think New York is a great place to thrift because it is a, a busy, fashionable, hip, city. Thrifting is not that great there. It's very gentrified, very, I don't know, it's very gentrified. I think that's how you say it. Very expensive. Yeah, so it's not, it's not the best if you want to find a good deal. Maybe if, if you want to find cool stuff, but you're but expect to spend more on items when you're there. But I was pleasantly surprised. We went to the first place, which both places were owned by L Train Vintage. The first one was more curated and I was mostly looking for dresses, but I did look through the tops and the skirts and I was kind of looking for t-shirts, but I already have my t-shirt base covered for a future video that I'm doing. If I were to compare the prices of the vintage dresses to like upscale vintage stores, it was pretty decent. Thrift standards, expensive, but vintage store standards, pretty cheap. They were more on the ballpark of like $25. Mm. I think the highest I saw was like 40. So I tried on some really, really pretty dresses. And then the second store was massive, like huge. And that one was a lot more, I would say a lot more reasonable. It was definitely more along the lines of like Goodwill thrift store prices. Things were more around six to $10. And there was still some really good stuff in there. Again, I was focusing on dresses cause I'm looking for pieces for my costuming. And I did see a really cool dress 
wasn't my size, but it was very like, I don't know, it was like inspired, it looked like it was inspired by medieval, but not quite. It was perhaps a 70s dress. I didn't end up getting it, but I didn't even try it on. I didn't bother. I did try on quite a few dresses. One of them was like super long and kind of big on me, but I saw the potential in it. So yeah, it ended up being a very unexpected trip. I'm actually gonna be getting to see my sister-in-law again very soon. She's coming tonight. They're gonna be here for about a month because uh, she just wants to come out and see us and kind of get away from the city for a bit and do some thrifting. She's bringing one small suitcase and then we're gonna be thrifting and helping her um, find some things to wear while she's here because she loves to thrift here. She's from New York, but she loves to thrift here because it's a lot cheaper and she, she always finds really good stuff. So we're gonna be doing that. In the meantime though, I'm gonna show you guys what I got while I was in New York. We're gonna do a little haul because I know you guys, you know, after watching that thrift with me, you guys will wanna see what I bought. So I actually popped into one of the last places we went to. We accidentally went to a Goodwill outlet because we had an errand to run. We had to take a check to a, a mechanic or something rather near Queens. And we found a Goodwill over there and we thought it was a regular Goodwill. We walked in and it was bins and I was excited because I always think it's fun to go through the bins. I was just not prepared. I was dressed in my cute dress that I wore when we went to the Brooklyn Bridge and I didn't have gloves. Gloves are very, very, very necessary when you're at the bins, no matter where you are. And um, so there was no filming allowed in there. I had my camera, but you're not allowed to film in there. And I respected that, but I will show you guys what I got. So firstly, I'll show you a non-clothing item. I got this really beautiful platter. And let me tell you, I was questioning Questioning this purchase because I didn't know how the heck I was gonna get it back because I came with a very full suitcase as it is because I brought a lot of costuming for, for potential photo shoots that never happened. Um, but I found a way. I put this in my backpack wrapped in one of the, the dresses that you guys are gonna see. I actually have, I have this on a little propped up stand on my china cabinet in the kitchen because I have a fall one that I had out but I decided to to put that away because it's not fall. So I have that there. I think I might use this on my vanity at some point to put my perfumes on because I'm getting a new vanity. Not new, new to me. It's my cousins. Um, and I'm gonna be, when I rearrange this office. So I don't know, I'm still debating on how I'm gonna use this. But for now, it's just in my china cabinet. Another item, my sister-in-law actually found this. It is the second volume of the Jungle Book. Unfortunately, they didn't have my man focus. 
Unfortunately, they didn't have the first volume. We looked and they were actually closing and they were on a megaphone telling us to get out, you know, pay for our stuff and get out. So we didn't really have time to look, but I figure I can just be on the hunt for volume one or, you know, mismatch books. I'm mostly buying books lately for the aesthetic. And I liked the green, as you guys can tell from my, my hauls whenever I've hauled vintage books. I like green books. So I, and it was like 25 cents. So how could I not, you know? Another quick little item I grabbed right before we left were a couple of doilies. And yes, I have washed these. I hauled some doilies before. So I thought, you know, I've been wanting to get more. So I just grabbed these cause you know, this is like weighs nothing. And then there was a rectangle one. These held up really well in the wash. And I believe there's like little, but they look like butterflies almost in here. Flowers and butterflies, I think right, like right here. Super cute. Another thing at the bins that I got that I've already washed is this really cute sage green sweater. Very chunky and it's 100% wool. I'm just touching the boobs. I love this. I think it's very cottage core. And then I also got a blazer, which I need to dry clean and I don't want to really touch it right now. But if you can just imagine a brown tweed blazer with elbow patches, like the classic professor jacket. That's what I found. And it's a women's and I don't know if it fits because I refuse to put it on my body until it is clean. And then you guys saw this, me trying this on in L train. This is a white chemise. And I really liked these little, this little panel detail or what do you call it? It's like a, it's a tear, but it's like, I don't know, it just looks really fairy core. And in my try and clip, I'm gonna try it on with a bodice because that is how I envision this. So I don't think this is the right corset for this dress, but you can kind of get the idea, like what I'm going for, like with the, this, this tear and the, the it looks very fairy-like, very, uh, Tinkerbell, so I'll have to pick out a better corset, but you get you get you get the idea without it It's it's pretty big I had to like tuck some of it under actually because the waistline was like clear down here, but you know, it's cute I like it. It has potential and yes I'm wearing leggings because I'm cold even though it's like 100 degrees outside I also ended up getting this skirt despite the fact that it's a little bit big on the waist. I figure that I can just take in the side seam at some point once I do my thrift flips. Or I could even make it like a, a dress. I don't know. We'll see. I just really loved the print on it. I've been really loving florals lately and I love this like dusty blue color. Ugh. I'm not usually a blue person, but lately dusty blue has like this chokehold on me. I don't know where it came from, but I love it. And I did end up getting this dress. Again, it's another blue, but like a darker cobalt. And I just loved the floral. Unfortunately, your girl shrunk it. And I thought I read the care instructions correctly, but apparently I didn't. And it did shrink in the wash. The sleeves are now a little bit shorter. Well, a lot shorter. The bodice is shorter and it's a little bit tight in my bust, which is really sad. Also, the collar won't lay flat. I think I might just wait and see if I can, because I, I am wanting to get in shape because I've just been like, I have the lung capacity of an 80 year old. So I've been wanting to like do aerobics and like Pilates stuff. Because last year I was really in shape and I've completely lost, I've completely lost that. And I think I talked about this in a previous video, but it is my goal to get healthy again because like I'm not healthy right now, guys, physically. Mentally I'm doing better, but like physically I'm not. Like, I don't know if this is, a nutritional issue, but my legs have been bruising really easily. In fact, when I was in New York, I had a bruise like this. I still have it. It's still healing. I developed a bruise like this big on my, my, the upper part of my leg. And by the time I got home, it was like black. And I can't tell you where I got it. I have no idea. And since then I have like these little bruises all over my legs. And every time I Google bruises on legs, it tells you some pretty scary things of what could be wrong. Never WebMD stuff because you will think you're dying, which is where I'm at. So I'm gonna start drinking smoothies and doing some light workouts. I can't do heavy stuff because I, I collapse. So long story short, maybe the dress will fit better in a couple months after I get my butt in gear and actually start taking care of myself physically. Again, the goal isn't to lose weight. It's just, it's just to feel better. Next, I did end up getting this brown dress. It is a little bit tight in the waist, but refer to my previous rant. So I had to have help last time I tried this on and I am alone, so I can't zip it up, but just there you go. This is, this is what she looks like. 
Yep. I really love the pleating on it and the neckline is just so freaking cute. And I believe this is either 1960s or 1950s. I want to say 1960s just because of the tag. If anyone is a little bit more knowledgeable than me, I'll show you the tag. And I think this will be really nice in the fall. Like I have some boot, I have some shoes from Mod Cloth, like two different pairs of shoes from Mod Cloth that I got. One during Black Friday and then one was sent to me for the fall campaign. It would be perfect with this. We've got these. These were sent to me during the fall campaign. And then I bought these during Black Friday. And I think together they would be perfect. A match made in heaven. I think this is the last thing, but I'm not sure. Um, I did end up getting this pink 70s kind of prairie style dress. I just really liked the, the cut of it. It is a little bit big, but I plan on taking it in and also using it as kind of a thrift flip. Um, I don't really like the neckline, so I'm thinking I might give it a square neckline and maybe altering the sleeves to be a little bit less... Bleh. I don't know if I'm gonna make a short sleeve or maybe try to add some fabric, add like a slit and add some fabric to make it like a bell sleeve, which would be really cool. Um, kind of like that other one, the orange one that I hauled a while back that I got at the antique fair from the $6 booth. It kind of has the potential to be kind of like a Renaissance inspired dress. So that's why I kind of want to give it the more square neckline. That way it'll look good with stays as well. Like maybe I can get a more plain, like a cream pair of stays in order to go over, especially with the like the scallop. Oof, that'd be so nice. I need to hit up some brands or save up some money for a nice, a nice corset to go with this. And it is very long and I don't like wearing heels. So I'll, I'll probably hem it as well. So yeah, I'm really hoping that in the future, once everything kind of starts to settle down in my life that I can do some collaborative photo shoots with people, whether that's here or somewhere else. But that right now it's not really in my plans to do that. And not to say I'm a little bit scarred. I'm gonna be like super, ang if I plan anything else, I'm gonna be super anxious the whole time that like it's gonna all fall apart again, honestly. Like I'm scared. So yeah, right now I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna chill out for a bit. Just continue to take photos and work with brands and build up my portfolio. If you aren't already following me on Instagram, go follow me. I post the photography that I, like the collaborations that I do with brands and with other photographers and my family. I post reels and TikToks, which I, I cross post here as well. So yeah, and also if you're not subscribed, um, subscribe and like. It really does help me out when you guys like the video. I'm trying to get in people's recommendations and in their, their feed. I have the goal of reaching 5,000 subscribers, um, maybe by September, maybe sooner, we'll see. Um, but anyway, thank you so much for watching. Thank you so much for going on this journey with me and on this adventure. I really hope you guys have a great rest of your day. I hope you have a great summer. Stay cool, stay safe because a lot of my state is on fire in the next couple months. So hope, hopefully you guys are, are safe. I will see you guys in the next one, which is actually coming up really soon. I can't wait to show you. Bye-bye.